believes tonight, Governor had delivered a restate commitment to workers and pensioners' welfare. The federal government warns against illicit financial flows into the private public partnership projects. National Assembly question President Tinobu's loans request. Prosecutors in France demand 20 years imprisonment for initiator of mass rape. Good evening, welcome to the Major Report. Baba Tunde Polatito is my name. Osho State Governor Senator Ademola Adeleke has described the state of water recipients as taught barriers of excellence and development in the state, calling for deeper collaboration between the state government and professionals. Governor Adeleke said the recognition is a call for more service, stating that there was ceremony. Stating these at the award ceremony as part of activities marking his second year anniversary in Oshobo, the state capital, Oluwatubinoba Otuniga has details. In a grand ceremony held in Oshobo, the state capital of Oshun State, Governor Demola Adelike celebrated his state's achievements and contributions during his two years in office. The state award program, a key highlight of the governor's anniversary activities, brought together prominent figures from across Nigeria and beyond to honor outstanding Osho indigents who have significantly contributed to state and national development. Delivering his keynote address, Governor Adeliki underscored the importance of recognizing and celebrating excellence across diverse fields, emphasizing that the awards were non-partisan and based strictly on merit. The governor further highlighted his administration's strides in education, healthcare, infrastructure, science and technology, and climate change, noting that these achievements have been acknowledged both locally and internationally. Addressing the awardees, Governor Deliki commended their contributions to the growth and development of the state, adding that the recognition bestowed upon awardees is not just a celebration but a call to action and an invitation to continue the mentorship of upcoming generations while amplifying their community services. He also reiterated his administration's openness to innovative ideas and constructive engagement. Our administration is two years in the south You are the best Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Lasso Yusuf, expressed gratitude to Governor Adeleke for recognizing their efforts. He praised the Governor for fostering peace in the state and creating an environment where civil servants align harmoniously with the administration's vision. Honorable Yusuf described the award as a call to further service for the progress of Ocean State and its people. On behalf of the was attended by several dignitaries, including the Deputy Governor of Prince Kola Adewusi, who led other members of the State Executive Council, and the Speaker of the Osho State of Assembly, Honorable Adewale Egbedo, who also led other members of the State House of Assembly, Reverend Mother Esther Ajayi and other distinguished guests also graced the occasion. The award categories included education, traditional institutions, royal fathers, business moguls, entrepreneurs, political leaders, military, paramilitary, religion and the legal profession. Bar and bench, additional categories recognize achievements in innovation and ICT, the beverage industry, arts and culture, entertainment, persons with disability, non governmental organizations, civil societies, sport and public service, among others. It has been Uluwa Tobiloba Udunuga reporting. Governor Ademola Adeliki has said, putting the welfare of workers. And the entire citizens of Oshun remains the first man charge and front banner of its administration. The Bladelike stated this while presenting both certificate worth 2 billion naira to contributory pensioners at the local government service commission hall. Uluwa Tobiloba Odutuga now reports. In a significant step towards alleviating pension related challenges, Oshun State Governor Senator Ademola Adeliki presented bond certificates worth nearly 2 billion naira to contributing pensioners 
at the local government service commission hall of the state government sectorial. This gesture by Governor Ademola Ateleke underscores the state government's dedication to the welfare of its senior citizens, marking a key milestone in its two-year administration. Addressing the gathering, shortly after the symbolic presentation of bond certificates, Governor Ateleke stated that his administration has left no one in doubt as to their passion to address challenges facing pensioners and the pension sector in the state. He added that senior citizens deserve due attention from state leadership as a matter of duty, reiterating that his administration is committed to bringing soccer to pensioners in the state. Governor Adelike further disclosed that his administration has paid over 22.6 billion naira in pension arrears within two years, an amount nearing 70% of what the previous administration paid over 12 years. He highlighted that his achievement was coupled with the groundbreaking policy and ruling pensioners in the health care insurance scheme, ensuring better health care access for senior citizens. As we mark our second year anniversary and restate our resolute policy of standing attention to pension matters, our leadership will continue to resolve individual and personal issues plaguing the sector. In specific terms, we are working to standardize pension administration to ensure pensioners are treated with required dignity and timeliness. Earlier in his remarks, the state head of service, Mr. Anyole Yaino, who is the host, said the bond certificate presentation does not only reflect the government's commitment to honorary retirees' contributions, but also set the high standard for pension administration in the state. He added that by paying a significant portion of the pension debt inherited from previous administrations and implementing impactful policies like the health care insurance scheme, the governor is effectively reshaping the narrative around the care for senior citizens in Ocean State. The head of service further commended the support and love of the governor for civil servants and the senior citizens, including the implementation of 75,000 naira minimum wage, payment of half salary sold by past administration, payment of gratuity and other areas for the state workers, among others. Indeed, this administration that the Lord has put in place, we will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Our leadership will be Present at the occasion were the Deputy Governor, Prince Kola Adewusi, Secretary to the Ocean State Government, Alajit Esimi Walai, other members of the State Executive Council, and Osho People's Democratic Party Chairman, Honorable Sunday Bisi, among others. It has been Uluwa Tobilova Odu Nuga reporting. Wife of the Governor, Mrs. Titi Lola Adeleke, has re emphasized that her office remains omitted to promote the welfare of children, including those who special needs, just as she described birth as a hallmark of the Christmas celebration. Mrs. Adeleke made us known at the opening ceremony of the 2024 OFPC Father Christmas Show. Our reporter, Oluji Amuda, has the details. The opening ceremony of the 2024 OSBC Fire Christmas Show was done in grand style as the board chairman of the conglomerate, Engineer Mayowa Olosho, and the permanent secretary and director general of OSBC, Mrs. Jolade Ibarola, together with the management and staff of the corporation, played host to the arrays of dignitaries who converged for the annual event. In her speech, the wife of the governor, Mrs. Titilola Adeleke, who was accompanied by Mrs. Fatima Oyuusi, the wife of the chief of staff, Mrs. Balikis Akileye, the wife of the head of service, Mrs. Moji Aino, and the permanent secretary, Minister of Women Affairs, Children and Social Welfare, Mrs. Abimbala Babatunde, among other dignitaries, said Christmas, which is a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, is a joyous occasion and a season to spread love. She re-emphasized that her office remains committed to promoting the welfare of children, including those with special needs. Christmas is a divine period that promotes love, unity, togetherness, and show of God's love to us all. I commend the management of OSPC for this year program. I join in wishing our beautiful papers, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year ahead. Earlier in his address of welcome, the chairman, board of OSBC, Engineer Mayo Wolosho, said the conglomerate will continue to transmit programs that promote the interests of children and youth. It is a thing that we can buy by the way that you are now, you are principal, the certificate of the state. I can say this bit peacefully. In 
his words of exhortation, Pastor Joseph Ajayi from Christ Apostolic Church, a heaven of peace, Araro Mioshubu, admonished the people to embrace peace as Jesus is the Prince of Peace and his birth symbolizes redemption for the human race. The event featured a special rendition from the OSBC Choir, Fountain of Life Church Choir, and presentation from pupils of the school with special needs, among others. <laughs> The Arkansas of Hawaii, Domino, Oba Samuel Idowu, and the Alabi of Agba, Oba Rufus Ogunwale, we are among the royal fathers who grace the occasion. The event climax with the presentation of gifts to the children by Santa Claus, popularly known in local palace as Father Christmas. Oluchi Amuda, OSBC News. The federal government has expressed concern over the potentials of illicit financial flows, finding their way into public-private partnership projects. Interior Minister Mulugo Mitruji Ojo raised this alarm at the high-level roundtable public-private partnership to fight financial crimes jointly organized by the Nigerian National Finance Intelligence Unit and London Stock Exchange Group in Abuja. He emphasized that the need for increased collaboration between government agencies and private sector partners to prevent such activities. Minister Ojo stressed the importance of thorough vetting of public, public, private partnership promoters by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit to ensure transparency and accountability. He stated that the federal government is committed to attracting clean investment and preventing the misuse of public funds. The minister also called for greater collaboration among government agencies to enhance information sharing and streamline regulatory processes. He emphasized the need to break down silos and work together to combat financial crimes. The CEO of the Nigerian Finance Intelligence Unit, Afsad Bakari, echoed this sentiment and noted the interconnected nature of financial crimes and the importance of international cooperation. State governments have tackled the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited for requesting an additional subsidiary fund of 1.19 trillion naira for July 2024, citing a change rate differentials of premium motor spirit importation and joint venture tax taxes. State governments are not happy with the National Oil Company over the latest request as they raised concern over NFPCS accounting practices. The findings were based on the Federation Account Allocation Committee Post-Mortem Subcommittee Report for September 2024. The report revealed that agent with differentials to the 4.5 cent trillion as of June 2024 due to under-recovery on petrol import between July, between August 2023 and June 2024, but the figure increased to 5.31 trillion naira by July 2024. The NPCL attributed the rise to fluctuations in foreign exchange rates and unresolved subsidy payment from previous months. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited (NPCL) has concluded plans to commence the lifting of petroleum product from protocol to refinery, the lifting which will commence today, the lifting which commenced today followed the commencement of operation after many months of rehabilitation. In a statement released, the company stated that NFPC delivers protocol to refinery as the plan begins truck out of products today. However, the Chief Corporate Communication Officer Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NPCN, Ulufa Mishonoye, who confirmed the development said today marks a monumental achievement for Nigeria as the port court for the final officially commences crude oil processing. This groundbreaking milestone signifies a new era of need of energy independence and economic growth for our country. The group chief executive officer NPCN said that they are aware of Nigeria's challenge in 
source of life, but are not there to give excuses. The focus on delivering the rehabilitation project of two other refineries and all other investment towards refining of refining capacity. The National Assembly has questioned President Bonatinobu's no request as some revenue generating agencies of the federal government disclose that they have already surpassed their budgetary revenue target for 2024. The chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Zak Adidi, said the federal government generated 1.5 trillion naira in education tax, a substantial amount above its 70 billion target. Adidi made a known during an interactive session with the National Assembly Joint Committee on Finance, Budget and National Planning of 2025-2027 million term expenditure framework on fiscal strategy paper. The revenue generating agencies in their separate presentations before the Joint Committees on 2024 budget performance and revenue projection for 49.7 trillion Naira 2024 budget made excessive revenue target submissions in the 2024 fiscal year. This revelation on company income for the trillion Naira was targeted for 5.7 trillion Naira as we realize now. President Bola Tinubu has requested the Senate to confirm the appointment of Lieutenant General Olufemi Vietti and his substantive chief of Barbie staff. The request it was in line with Section 218 of the 1999 Constitution and Section 18 of the Armed Forces Act was conveyed in a letter read during the plenary by Senate President Joshua Pardew. President Tinubu has requested the Senate to confirm the appointment of Lieutenant General Ubudi as the substantive of Army staff, putting his exceptional professionalism and unwavering commitment to national security and stability since as new office in acting capacity. Tinobu appointed Ubudi as the acting chief of Army staff following the illness of Lieutenant General Tariq Lavada, who later passed away. The Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company has concluded a remit to combat energy theft across its network. A statement made by the spokesperson who so now goes through as if the disco confirmed a partnership with the Special Investigation and Prosecution Task Force on Electricity Offenses to identify, investigate, and prosecute individuals involved in energy theft. The statement quoted the firm's acting management director, Francis Aguha. Has reiterated the company's zero tolerance policy on energy theft, warning of severe consequences for offenders. Goa has emphasized the critical role of this Cepetro collaboration in strengthening IBDEC's capacity to detect and prosecute violators, underscoring the negative impact of energy theft on severe delivery. Former Kogi State Governor Yayabiru has again honored the invitation of the EFCC over alleged misappropriation of funds. According to reports, the tormented former governor went to act to the anti graft agency office today in company of his lawyers. His visit to the commission follows the Supreme Court judgment with dismissed state cases on the constitutionality of the anti graft agency. As, of, as part of efforts to combat the Nakurawa sect, the federal government will deploy more military personnel and formations in the state where the terrorists operate. Information says the sect is operating in the northwest state of Sokoto and Kebi, as well into Niger State in the north central Nigeria, as well as Kaduna State. Special Advisor of Security Matters to Government Mada Colonel Ahmed Usman retired, said the federal government promised to deploy more security operatives in the state to tackle the sect that attacked Mera Village, Kennedy State, in the 17 resident dead early this month. Now, welcome to our sports segment. The 
35 Qatar Open Championship in golf, the Tatinet edition will, for the first time ever, feature two amateur golfers from Nigeria. This was the outcome of the rebuilding trust goal showcasing talent teams golf competition organized by the High Performance Center and Sport Leadership Hub of the Sport University of Nigeria in Doha State of Qatar recently. According to Dr. Luka, the director of High Performance Center and Sport Leadership Hub, Nigeria Golf has said 20 old seats have been blacklisted by the Qatari authorities for failure to honor previous invitations despite the Golf has been granted visas and other traveling support rather than play their scholars upon arriving in the country. The two credit Qatar Qatar Open slots will be offered for two top finishes of the qualifying talented to be held in Nigeria from January 2024, 20, 20, 2026, 20, at the year to be named Let's now join Tony Sobarekon for our foreign stories. This is wife Giselle Pelicos unconscious with drugs and invited dozens of strangers to abuse her in their family home in Paris and the southern town of Mazan between 2011 and 2020. The 71-year-old admitted to all charges against him in a trial that has scandalized France and drawn worldwide attention to the issue of sexual violence. 49 other men have also been put on trial for participating in the abuse. Prosecutors are expected to announce what sentences they will seek against the co-accused over the next two days. Prosecutors have rejected arguments made by many of the men aged between 21 and 68 at the time of the assault. They believe they were participating in a consensual fantasy or were not in their right mind. Footage played in court over recent weeks, recorded by Dominic Pellicott, showed Giselle lying motionlessly while men assaulted her. In another development, United States President-elect Donald Trump has pledged to slap a 25% tariff on all goods from Mexico and Canada and 10% tariff on Chinese products in response to irregular border crossing and drug trafficking. Trump's announcement rattled international markets and offered the clearest indications yet that he intends to implement a concentrated form of the unusual American first economic policies that followed his return to the White House. He stated that the representatives of China said they would institute their maximum penalty for any drug dealers caught doing this, but they never followed through, and drugs are pouring into the country, mostly through Mexico, at levels never seen before. Canadian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Christian Freeland said Canada and the United States had one of the strongest and closest relationships when it comes to trade and border security. According to reports, Ontario Premier Doug Ford said the proposed tariffs will be devastating to workers and jobs in both countries. He further said that the federal government needs to take the situation at the border seriously. Toyin Subaricon reporting for OSBC News. And that report concludes tonight's edition of the Major Report. It was edited by Christiana Odama, Babatunde Bonatitois, my name, 